Hey everybody, my name's Democracy, and today we're kicking off a new boss ranking series. Over the course of the last month, we ranked the difficulty of the Soulsborn. I really hate the term Soulsborn. Oh, okay, well then let's just call it the Soul Series. It says top 10 hardest bosses in the Soul Series. Bloodborne doesn't have any related story from Dark Souls series. You fucked up now, didn't ya? Well, I knew there was gonna be a little resist. For the last fucking time, you autistic child, Bloodborne is not a fucking Souls game. Uh. Why would you use Bloodborne, you idiot? It's not part of the Souls series in any way. Okay, okay, I hear you. I had no idea this would get people so riled up. So I've got a solution everybody can agree on. We're gonna call it Darkborn. You heard it here first. Next list is top 10 reasons why I love the word Darkborn. So for the Soul series, including Bloodborne, we've ranked the difficulty of 139 bosses. You all have given me a ton of great ideas for future lists, but before we get to those, I want to put our boss list to rest with the ranking of all 139 from worst to best. The criteria is going to be as follows. Difficulty, 10 points. This factor is not based on measurable difficulty like in our boss rankings. Instead, this is a rating on how balanced the challenge feels in the context of the fight. For example, while the Nameless King fight is extremely challenging, it never felt to me like it was unfair and the difficulty matched the reputation of a powerful god. A boss like the Royal Rat Authority, on the other hand, fuck those rats. Lore? 20 points. I'm sure counting lore as part of a boss fight will be debated by some, but it's something that's really important to me. The most engaging thing about these games next to their difficulty is the atmosphere they're able to achieve. Most of this is thanks to the deep and intricate stories from Soft Weaves, and I believe a good backstory can give great context to a fight. Design, 30 points. What is a boss without good design? FromSoft is known for developing some of the best boss fights in gaming, but that doesn't mean there aren't some blemishes. And when deciding on the quality of a boss, the actual mechanics are undoubtedly one of the most important factors. Entertainment value, 40 points. At its core, why do we play games? For fun. When it comes down to what makes a boss good or bad, the most important factor from my view is how enjoyable it is. Obviously this one's going to be highly subjective, so I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. With all that said, let's kick things off with my choice for the worst boss in the series. When talking about fair difficulty, there is no boss in the entire series that has a worse understanding of the concept. I think most of us can agree that this is the uncontested worst boss in the series. That's because this boss is a straight up crapshoot. Sure the floors fall out in the same place and there's a set path to victory. The problem is this overgrown weed loves to sweep you right in those holes. Then once you break the second whatever the hell this is, you get assaulted by firestorms as well. So the difficulty is bad, the design is clearly bad, in fact it's so bad I've heard the developers actually apologize for this abomination. Though I couldn't find a source for this, so unless one of you posted in the comments, I'd take that with a grain of salt. And speaking of salt, that's a good way to sum up my opinion on this boss in one word. I'm salty that the bed of chaos always jams me in its holes. I'm salty that I have to run for days to get back only to get jammed in some more. I'm salty the boss design focuses on platforming in a game heralded for its melee combat. And I'm salty that the Witch of Izalith battle was reduced to this mess. That's the real shame. The Witch of Izalith was one of the lords. She acted in haste to preserve the Age of Fire by using her own pyromancy to recreate the first flame. This grave mistake resulted in the Chaos Flame that eventually consumed her and became the source of the demons of Lordran. That means bosses like the Asylum Demons, Taurus Demon, and Capra Demon all have links to this vital character. And they reduced that fight to this bullshit! The Twin Dragon Riders exemplify my two biggest complaints about the Dark Souls 2 boss design. It's a rehash fight, and it's a gank. I think it's been well evidenced over the course of the series that it's very, very difficult to get an outnumbered fight right. Often they result in being too easy, and in some cases they can be just downright frustrating. But with all the hype that Ornstein and Smell have received from fans, it was only natural that FromSoft would try to recapture that magic in Dark Souls 2. Well, let's just say that the Twin Dragon Riders missed the mark. They missed the mark by so damn much, I'd question if they weren't blind. This fight doubles down on one of the easiest bosses in the series and places it in one of the game's most iconic areas. That's part of the problem too. The Dragon Riders are supposed to be the trusted and fabled warriors of King Vendrick. Well, I have no idea how in the hell these guys killed anything at all. 
So the difficulty isn't there, these buffoons are horrible representations of their lore, the design is lazy, and the only entertainment I get out of all of this is the slight bit of joy when it's all over. Thank you, Dragon Riders. But as if this list just wanted to quickly outdo itself, we've got a boss that is a rehash and a gank that offers five times the trouble. You may ask yourself, how on earth is this fight possibly any better than the Dragon Riders? It's basically the same thing you just discussed, except it's more of them. Welp. The bottom of this list was really hard to divide. I had to focus on the tiniest of details to set them apart. And for all this fight does wrong, like give a crappy reskin from Dark Souls and outnumber the player to simulate difficulty instead of creating interesting and complex mechanics, it does one thing right. They're guarding a bell. Yep, that's it. That should tell you how terrible the Dragon Riders and Beta Chaos are. This boss literally scraped its way all the way to the third worst spot because these are bell gargoyles and they're guarding a bell. That's immersion, people. Over the course of two separate lists, I've talked a decent bit about how much I hate the Laron Dark Beast. To sum it all up, this fight boils down to a DPS test. If you've got the damage to knock down the beast, this will be a breeze. But if you don't, you're going to be battling the true enemy of this fight, the camera. I'm all for fast and aggressive bosses. In fact, as you'll eventually see, I tend to favor bosses with that type of design. But this is a case where I think things were just taking a few steps too far. The real disappointment here is that I think there actually is a good boss underneath these issues. If there was some way to slow down the boss enough that would allow the player to keep track of it and then maybe give it an attack to keep players from hiding under it, I think the fight might actually be a lot better. But as it stands, this fight is a DPS race that requires you to relentlessly sprint to the boss's underside while struggling to control the camera. That's not fun or well designed. If you've played Dark Souls 3 through Arch Dragon Peak, you can probably guess why the Wyvern shows up here. This isn't so much of a boss fight as it is just a piece of a level. After you dodge the Wyvern, you run into a bunch of dragon enemies. You can fight your way through, or do like those of us too bored with this fight and sprint through like a madman. The only real resistance along the way is the ol' axe and chain. I'm telling you, this guy will follow you to the depths of hell to hit you with it. But seriously, he'll follow you to the ladder, so be careful. Once you're at the top, you get your three points of entertainment. Fuck yeah, you know that was cool. And that's it. There's nothing else of value here. So while there's no actual boss battle, at least you get to feel like an action hero for a few seconds. Okay, if I were to determine who the worst bosses in the series were based on salt levels alone, Wolnir is definitely my number two behind you know who. This is because that mother Let's try that again. I don't like this fucking poison. That's because it's literally democracy kryptonite. If there's one thing I love in these games, it's being recklessly aggressive even to the point of trading damage. But you can't do that in this fight. If you're too aggressive, you'll get caught quickly by the poison. Now this is okay. Stationary bosses like this should have a way to force you off of them temporarily. The problem is that this poison will drain your health in a mere second. I always pump tons of points and vitality in lieu of damage to complement my playstyle, and it just doesn't matter. You die, die, die. Of course, this is my fault for not playing more cautious. This boss can be easily handled with a little patience, but for some reason, I just feel compelled to throw caution to the wind and keep running into the danger zone. And truthfully, this is nearly the only way you'll ever take damage because you could dodge his attacks with your eyes closed. Then we've got the lore, which is vague and hints toward a being that isn't even associated with the abyss, but rather fears it. Well then, at least I'll get a little joy every time I send this goober careening into his worst nightmare. Back to Dark Souls 2, and we're back with another reskin. I'll go ahead and give a spoiler that the original Smelter Demon is way higher on this list. There's a lot to love about that fight from my perspective. In contrast, this fight offers almost nothing of value. While it may be a source of frustration, I actually think it's clever of FromSoft to change the attack timings of the demon. It's also cool that it's magic based instead of fire, but that's where the praise ends. One of my biggest problems I have with this boss doesn't even involve the fight itself. The brutal run up to it ruins any sense of enjoyment I may have been able to get. And then there's the fact it's just hard to reward the idea of sticking two of the same bosses in the game with only minor differentiation. It's DLC too, which means people paid extra for that. 
shameful, but I can at least commend the minor differences in the fight. Ugh, the rats, man. The rats! No point in avoiding it, the rats in the beginning are the main reason this boss ranks so low. Even though the boss itself is rather similar to Sif and is extremely unappealing to look at, it's still not that bad to fight. It's not particularly fun or anything, but it's not offensively bad. What is offensively bad is placing a small pack of poison-filled monstrosities that can end a fight before it even begins. Basically, if you get toxic before you can kill them all, the fight is over. The boss will swoop in and there will be too much going on to handle the situation effectively. But if you kill the rats, it's almost a guaranteed win with how simple the big rat dog is to handle. At least the fight has some kind of lore to it, even if it's only a test to prove your worthiness to the Rat King. My question is, who the hell cares what the Rat King thinks anyway? I honestly cannot believe I forgot to list this fight in my recent list section on the top 5 most boring bosses in Souls. This should have been number 1. You remember Ballista Simulator 2009? Yeah, well this is Shoot 150 Arrow Simulator 2009. And it's not just shoot, you have to time it exactly right to hit the damn thing. And it takes about 12 seconds for it to go through its full animation and come back. 150 times 12 is 1800 seconds. That's a whole half hour! The only credit that I can give to it is that it does add a pretty neat environmental hazard, but the fight itself is the biggest snooze fest in the entire series. For our last entry of the day, we've got a fight that actually made it on our boring top 5. The Moonlight Butterfly can be described as, do you use Archer your magic? Well this fight will be over in a disappointing blink of an eye. Or do you use melee? Oh I'm sorry, it doesn't look like we accept that type of combat here. You'll just have to wait until this rejected seeth experiment decides to come down and nibble on the plants to regain energy so it can fly out of your reach even more! If it wasn't clear, I read your comments from the Dark Souls rankings and I now know the butterfly comes down to feed to regenerate its mana and health. All I gotta say is thank god, because otherwise melee fighters would be screwed here. But no matter what method of combat you use, there's no doubt that this fight is a total bore. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed checking out my choices for the biggest stinkers in the Souls boss library. Now I want to hear which bosses you find to be awful. I'll be back with numbers 129 through 115 on Thursday, so be sure to subscribe for more. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video!